In part 6 of the Vintage Motherboard Hall series, we have the Gigabyte K8 and F9 Ultra. Hello everyone and welcome to the 6th part of the Vintage Motherboard Hall series. In this video, we have the Gigabyte GA K8 and F9 Ultra, which is an ATX motherboard with socket 939 and the NF4 or N4 Ultra chipset. There's a number of things that I want to go over in this video. First of all, back here we have some bulging capacitors along the CPU power delivery, which will be very interesting to see if this board is actually going to power up at all and be stable. Under here we have the Athlon 64 3700+, which is our test CPU that I already plonked a cooler on, because it's just too much hassle to do this on camera. We have four slots of memory, they are DDR, uh, one, of course, we have dual channel capabilities on socket 939 as said in a previous part, up to a maximum of 4 gigabytes of RAM installed right here. We have two IDE channels, we have a floppy channel here, we have four SATA 2 3 gigabit per second ports, we have our nicely color coded front panel situation over here, three USB headers, we have RAID capabilities on this board should there be a RAID controller, in this case we do not have such a chip which would be this one over here. The silk screen here says SLI 1314, or three, or actually 3114. This is actually a misprint, it should be SIL 3114 for the silicon image uh, RAID controller, which was very common at the time. That particular chip also uh, works well in uh, Mac, I believe, or it was the 3112, either one of them, uh, for power PCs, if you ever wonder if, if you can use a SATA controller in a uh, PowerPC Mac. Yes, if you have a SIL 3112, uh, I believe that one is, is the one to have. Um, possibly the 14 as well. I'll put it somewhere up on the video if I remember. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's not that much going on. It is a very fully featured board, of course, because it is a uh, high-end chipset at the time, the Enforce 4 Ultra. We have already an iteration of the Gigabyte Dual BIOS here. We have two BIOS chips that you can switch between. We have PCI Express on this board, uh, which was standard for Enforce chipsets, starting with the Enforce 3 chipset on the uh, Socket 754. Two X1 slots, one X16, three PCI slots over here. This chip over here is the Gigabit LAN controller, which is made by Vitesse, because it is a Revision 2 board uh, based on that. Right. So yeah, we have FireWire room board as well, and um, not much else really to note. Right, so if we turn the board around ever so slightly, you can take a better look at these bulging caps. We have one, two, three, four of them that are bulged. They will need to be replaced at some point in the future in order to make this board great again. Right, on the back, it is a different affair than the vintage motherboards that we've looked at before. We have two PS2 ports here, two coaxial connectors, parallel serial gigabit LAN, which is actually a decent feature on a board like this, four USB 2.0 ports and HL audio. And we have a special backplate here on the back of this board, which is actually not uh, one that I have seen before. Usually they are the typical uh, standard AMD metal affair. No such luck in this case. All right. So, uh, yeah, while the light is fading, let's get this board set up and then, uh, yeah, see if it works at all. All right, that's much better. Now we have some light to work with. Okay, so let's open up these hatches here and then install some memory. We have two Samsung branded PC3200 memory sticks. So we'll have a total of 512 megabytes of RAM. This is all from the RAM drawer, of course, because, yeah, once you hoard RAM, you might as well use it. This RAM stick is not really cooperating that much. These RAM slots are tight, too. No, that's not what he said. Uh, anyway, there we go. That is firmly installed. This board has 24 pin already for power delivery for ATX standard. We do not have a 
24 pin power supply connected at the moment. You don't really need to anyway, 20 pin power supplies will work just fine. Let's install the CD-ROM. I feel uh, lucky today, so let's just install that straight away. Get that over with. I will not be installing the hard drive quite yet, I don't think. Eh, might as well actually. We're using a SATA hard drive. And a Hitachi 80 gigabyte drive. Which will connect over here on the first SATA port, like so. We don't have onboard video, so we'll need a video card. We have one right here, a Pellet GT210. That I dug out of my parts bin. Should be decent enough. What else do we need? We need a 12 volt power socket for the CPU power, which is somewhere, that's Pizza Express. Well, let's not connect that, that would be a bad time. We don't need any supplemental power anyway. And that is all we need to do for our power on test. And time for the power on test. Let's find the jumper for the power button. No, we have life. And we didn't connect a monitor. Right, reconnected everything. And we have a Athlon 64, 3700 plus. We have all the memory, we have dual channel capability enabled. DVD-ROM and hard drive are found. Okay. And our CMOS has a checksum error and it has reset itself. Nope, well, makes sense. Let's go into the BIOS here. If it will allow us to. Does not appear too happy to do that. Okay. And after reset, it stops posting. Decent. Okay. Um, let's give it a full power cycle. Also, just going to hold the power button for a couple seconds. Okay. Should have drained the power out of the capacitors. Nope, wasn't good enough for this one. All right. In that case, power button are these red pins over here, which we'll hold down for it to turn off. We'll turn the power supply off. I'll remove the SATA cable because it is in the way. It does not want to come off. There we go. We'll remove the CMOS battery, which is evidently flat and not very cooperative. It should come out easily, but it wouldn't. Okay. That's that removed. It's actually quite an old one. This one was not replaced yet. You can give that a go later. Not until I've declared this board as sort of working. Again, draining the power using the power button pins to be bridged like that. Turn the power supply back on. And turn the system back on. This should clear CMOS and allow it to post again, which it then does. Okay, yep, we can get into the BIOS this time. All right. Ah, yeah, we didn't actually connect the hard drive again. That's useful. Uh, all right, all right. Set the boot priorities.
go to integrate peripherals, see what we get here. We have a RAID function. So it does support RAID, despite not having the external RAID controller installed. Onboard Firewire. Yep, we now have AC97 audio, so no more legacy support. This is too new for that. We'll enable the legacy USB support. Should we ever decide to install an operating system that is not suited to this. You have some overclocking features, although I'm not really thinking it's a good idea to uh, start overclocking on a system that is uh, doesn't appear stable yet. We'll go for optimized defaults instead, and then change the boot order. So at least we have optimized defaults now. Good. Not much that we need to do. Nothing we need to do in terms of overclocking or whatever. Okay, we'll save. See if it posts again after saving the BIOS settings. And if it doesn't, then I'm likely going to condemn this board. CPU clock frequency is apparently 200 MHz. Well, the bus speed should be 200, but not the CPU clock itself. So let's hope that's what it means. And it's going to boot from the NVIDIA boot agent. Okay. So, so far, so good. It appeared to be a bit finicky at first, but at the moment it seems to be functional. Let's see if it posts again after being powered down. I'm watching the keyboard for the post indication. There is no such indication. I don't have a slower CPU that would sip less power, so the power delivery could remain up and running, I don't think. Well, in theory I should have a Sempron somewhere, but I'm not entirely sure where. Hmm. All right, okay. Again, let's hold down the power button again. There we go, it's turned off. Again, we're going to turn the power supply off once more. Hold down the power supply pins for another 10 seconds or so. So that's drained again. And we can turn the power back on and turn the board back on. We have to clear CMOS for every post to work and we're gonna have a fun day. Nope, didn't lag you that time. Well, I guess this board is more or less a no-go. I think those caps are too far gone for it to actually work. That'll be it for this session. So yeah. If I eventually get it up and running with the Sempron CPU, if I can find it, I'll add uh, another clip at the end of this video. But for now, we're going to declare the Gigabyte... What the hell was its name again? The K8 NF9 Ultra as not working. It does occasionally post, but after powering it down and back up again, it refuses to post unless you clear CMOS and then Hope for the best. So yeah, this board needs a recap in the VRM region. And yeah, should that ever happen, then we can test it again afterwards. For now, hope you enjoyed this part. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one.